Hello, my name is Mrs. Keidel. I am the art teacher here at Wickham Elementary. I also travel to a couple other spots here in the Iowa City Community School District, but today we're going to be creating some Pierre Mondrian inspired backgrounds using only the primary colors. Now we had a couple little videos to check out before you would get to this point today, but just remember, we are focusing on using lines and shapes and that we're gonna be using the three primary colors, which we know are red, yellow, and blue. Okay, so I'm hopefully able to get my face here. I'm using my iPhone for the first time to make a video, so bear with me. But here's what we're gonna be using today. For our background, everyone's going to get a very nice piece of painting paper. Now you're going to get one and only one piece of this. So if you make any mistakes, your next bet is to flip it over and try on the other side. But don't forget to get your name and class code on here first. We will have lots of different little containers, whether they're yogurt or Play-Doh, with the lids that also belong to them for some tracers today to help us with circles and ovals. And then we are going to have a bin of lots of little cardboard shapes as well to help us with our squares. Now, these are really nice to use, but you do not have to use them. When we do our tracing, we'll be using crayons in our primary colors and then filling in with watercolors. But if we're using primaries, friends, remember, blue, yellow, and red are the only ones we're going to be using today. Now, here's what we got to do. I'm gonna set my phone up here on a chair, so hopefully it stays in a good spot for us. And here we go. Let's get this zoomed in correctly. Thank you for your patience. Okay, so I'm gonna start with any color that I want for my primaries, yellow, red, or blue. No crayon is a bad crayon, always remember that. So if you get one that's maybe broken or a little shorter, that will be just fine. What we're gonna do is then kind of think about a composition. And a composition in art, we know, is where we decide to put things in our artwork. So if I have a stencil of a square, or even if I choose to draw it myself, I might kind of think, hmm, how am I gonna spread these out? Maybe I'll put one over up in the corner, another one off to the side, and a couple small ones on the bottom. I'm gonna start with blue today, just cause I feel like it. And I'm gonna trace around my stencil here. It's okay if I get my stencil a little dirty. And it is also okay to use a little bit of pressure by pushing down with a little bit of your strength to get this nice and traced. Now, you might end up having a stencil that you use the whole time. So you could have different sizes or maybe stick with the same one. I'm gonna do all blue for my squares and then I'm gonna move to a different color for my circles and my ovals. And please remember, you can always just draw your shapes too, especially if they're gonna be smaller. You don't need a stencil because you know how to make these shapes already. You've been practicing them since kindergarten. So I'm gonna trace this along, moving in a grooving. Got a couple squares, add one more down here. Then I'm gonna shift into some red. I think I'm gonna do some circles in red and a couple ovals in yellow. Now this shouldn't take us too much time. Once we get all of our tracing done, then we're going to be using those watercolors that we talked about. Again, I'm kind of pushing down with a little of my strength. I'm not pushing super duper hard, but I'm doing my best to get a good outline to maybe make it consistent, which means it's even around. And what I'd really wanna do is some cool overlapping. So I'm going to then put some shapes going over the tops of others. We know all about overlapping as well. Get one more over here. I'm gonna try a little bit of a different red. If you wanna have a couple different values of crayons, that is cool too. And then last but not least, I'm gonna get a couple ovals in yellow using a different container. These are all recycles 
fun to use different items in the art room. I'll try this side. Now, what's important is before you start to paint, if you get any little chunks of crayon, which is totally fine, just make sure you dust them off your paper or maybe even take a little trip to the trash can and dust them onto the trash so we don't get them on the floor for our lovely custodians to have to clean up. All right, now I'm feeling like my composition is nice and full. My paper is getting all of its lovely space used up and I'm ready to move on to my watercolors. Now, all of my first graders are almost like expert watercolor painters by now. Whoops, don't forget to get those extra little bits of crayon off. Shake a shake a shake. Let's do this over the trash, please. They are like expert watercolor painters because they know that when we use our watercolors, we only use the tippy tippy toes of our paintbrush. And that when we're using our water cup, we always wipe, wipe, and we never tapity tap. Because if we tap, tap, we can make a little bit of accidents or get paint places we're not trying. So, when you paint this today, I recommend to start inside of your shapes. But what's going to be super important about using our primary colors today is we don't want our primary colors to all be the same next to each other. We want to have variety. So if you have shapes that are overlapping, you'd have a different color in each space. And it's gonna look a little like this. I'll start off with a little blue. I'll fill this in. I've used my water to hydrate my paint and now I'm nicely filling it in. My crayons are gonna create an awesome little resist for me meaning they're gonna stop that paint from going into other places that we maybe don't want it. But what I'm gonna focus on is making sure, ooh, that's a dark blue. I could just dip a little water on my brush and move that around. What we really wanna make sure is that we have different primaries at every spot. So if I start with blue, I'm gonna clean, clean my brush, wipe, wipe it off, move to some red and fill in the spot next to it with a different color. This is gonna make our compositions more interesting. This is going to help us be more colorful because we're only using three colors. And it also gives you lots of choice as the artist to where you would like things to go. Please do your very best painting today. Take your time and double check that we don't have any colors right next to each other. It's very important. And especially when we use our yellow paint today, friends, please, please make sure you clean that brush really good so we can keep our yellows as nice as we can for as long as we can. Once you get done with all your shapes on the inside, then you can decide on a primary color to fill. Whoa, check it out. My resist had a little break in my crayon there. It spread out. That's okay. Art happens like that sometimes. But once you're done with your insides of all your shapes and double checking that we don't have any two colors that are the same touching each other, then you're going to fill in your entire background. And I would suggest using one color for that. But if you wanna mix it up, it's your composition. So you might feel free to do maybe half and half or a couple corners a different color. Just make sure you're using your brush nicely on the tippy tippy toes and that we're cleaning in between each color. Now, ladies and gentlemen, when you are all done, we should see no white spots on our paper. If you do not get done today, that is not a problem at all. And when we clean up, which I know all of my first graders know how to properly clean our paintbrushes and our water cups, we will put our artwork on the drying rack, starting at the, that's right, starting at the bottom. Alrighty, have so much fun today.
make sure we're doing our best work. And if we have happy little accidents, don't fret. That's what art is all about. I'll see you all next week.